probably knows better than I even. <coughs> but, um, uh, but Brian, first, Brett, do you want to uh, introduce or just state the names of the staff people who are with us tonight? Sure. Uh, sitting in the front row, uh, and this is not necessarily an order of importance, but we, uh, that's not to, not to take any of my things away from us. Uh, Jeff Jones, uh, town planner, uh, going to the, going to the back row left, or on the right side, uh, Nancy Emsley, soon to be departing us uh, for uh, town of Morrisville uh, as our finance uh, officer. Uh, and then I had thought Fred was going to be here this evening, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see him wander in here shortly, town engineer. Uh, and then, uh, police chief. Oh, I'm sorry, police chief uh, hiding in the corner here, uh, Percy Crutchfield, and then uh, uh, Alice Lloyd, uh, town clerk, uh, and then town attorney Paul Nessick. <coughs> so, so thank you very much for following us. And well, and I think that's important because we <coughs> oftentimes just, you know, sort of struggle with who, who everybody is, and Mr. Jones is new on staff, and... Uh, and Nancy's old but about to depart us, so uh, I think the um, the board and I uh, have sent um, congratulations by email, and uh, it's good to be able to do so in person as well. So we Thank look you. forward to, to uh, hearing good things from the town of Morrisville. Um, well then, let's, uh, let's call the meeting to order then and open with a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Jay Farrell will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. We are proud to pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do we have approval of the consent agenda? Okay. Those in favor? Uh, Opposed? No. Um, the consent agenda tonight consists of only two items, the approval of last meeting's minutes and the setting of a public hearing on a rezoning request on Mount Zion Church Road, <coughs> Mount Zion Road. And um, do I hear a motion to approve those two Consent agenda items. So that, that in favor? Aye. None opposed. Um, one of the things we've been talking about as we did organizational work was um, uh, there are the board uh, promulgated rules regarding the public input sessions um, and. Um, and I just wanted folks to be aware of it because sometimes the uh, well, there is a um, uh, a different, a little bit of a different policy between the county and us, but nonetheless, it is a um, uh, it is a half an hour that gets set aside, uh, no more than that, with five minutes to speak um, with groups or other people who might be grouped together to designate a spokesperson. One of the things that I think we might address when we go on retreat is the idea that speakers should not speak on any topic which is on the agenda. And um, there, is, um, uh, there is some feeling that that does limit people's ability to be able to speak uh, openly and freely on any given topic. And that, of course, one of the things we're here to do is to hear and encourage uh, public expression, and so as a result, we might want to review that as policy, especially if there's um, a matter that seems to be repetitively on the agenda, which would prevent people from being able to to have uh, dialogue or input. So, but tonight we have two speakers: Elaine Kiosa. <coughs> Hello.
hello, and thank you for um, letting me speak tonight. Um, I'm the I'm Elaine Keir, so I'm the Hall River Keeper with the Hall River Assembly, and wanted to touch on a few things that have to do um, with the Hall River tonight. Um, first, uh, just a couple comments about Chatham Park. Um, I believe the current discussions to build an $18 million sewer line to Stanford in order to accommodate the build out of Chatham Park are kind of putting um, the cart before the horse. I feel like we still do not have enough information about the total impact um, of, this, of this project on these 7,200 acres. Um, so I'm urging you once again to uh, require Chatham Park to do an environmental impact assessment of the total property. Um, right now, the uh, plan is that that's been accepted by the board is to do these kind of assessments in the small area plans. But the point of an environmental impact assessment is to always look at the entire piece of land so you can make wise decisions about what gets put where. And um, that has not been done. So I am urging that. Um, I think it's the only way we're going to really know the true impacts on the Hall River and Jordan Lake, the water quality, um, and on the lower Hall River State Natural Area, which is truly a jewel in uh, Chatham County. For those of you that have not taken hikes along it, uh, this is kind of a year the Hall River Assembly is celebrating the lower Hall River State Natural Area. And, uh, welcome you to join us on one of our hikes and see just how beautiful this place is that will definitely be impacted by Chatham Park. I um, urge you to ask them to set aside more land to protect um, those beautiful woodlands on their side of the river of the lower Hall River State Natural Area. Second, um, to just urging you to uh, establish and appoint a citizen advisory committee for Chatham Park. We have so much knowledge uh, in our very diverse community here that could, I think, really help guide the decisions about Chatham Park and um, the current idea of this Compass Committee with, with this Chatham Park's committee, that's nice, but it's not the same as a town citizen advisory committee would be, so that's what I'm urging. Then on a very different subject, um, I um, was the co-author of this report, Sludge in Our Waters, this past fall that was um, the result of a uh, fairly lengthy investigation in collaboration with some um, area scientists on industrial contaminants um, in municipal sewage sludge that are getting into our surface waters and then applied to, um, excuse me, they're being applied to agricultural lands and ending up in our surface waters. So this is different from um, the effluent, the treated wastewater going straight into the waters. Um, this is what ends up in the sludge and because we have a system in the whole United States where we combine residential and industrial waste together, the wastewaters, um, there are many chemicals that are ending up in the sludge that had previously just been unknown. They're not tested for, they're not required to be tested for, because they're not really supposed to be in there. Um, so this investigation looked primarily at perfluorinated compounds, which are a big ingredient in flame retardants and coatings. A lot of industrial processes use them. And it was pretty disturbing to find out what's ending up in our waters. And unfortunately, Pittsburgh is one of the um, drinking water sources, the Haw River. Pittsburgh um, is there. There's definitely um, some of this coming into the Haw River and into Pittsburgh's source water. Um, even Owasa, uh, we found these chemicals in Cane Creek Reservoir. So this is not uncommon, but because this is a much less protected source, the Haw River. It is a problem here. So this is a uh, report I urge you to read, and there's a mapping tool that we created that you can go, it tells you how to go online, and um, you can click it on the Hall River watershed, you can look at Chatham County, and you can look at where, um, where these sludge application sites are. And we see this as the beginning of a lot more investigation and discussion, and hopefully some changes in policy. There's a lot of recommendations. Um, it's a difficult, complex subject, um, 
but uh, one that definitely needs tackling. So hope you'll hope you'll take a look at this. I have a question for you. Um, yes. I know some time ago, um, folks in Raleigh um, kind of lowered the protection standards for rivers, thinking that the um, the B um, at Jordan Lake they'd use the solar bees to clean up the lake instead of. And since they found that that doesn't work, um, is there any way that we restoring some of those protections for the rivers? Have you heard anything about? So those are the Jordan Lake rules that were pretty much put on hold. Um, so these solar bees could whirl around out there doing nothing, as we now know from the you know the first year of data. There, there's no way they could do anything if you stood by the Hall River in this latest flood. To imagine little things twirling around would have any impact on the water quality of the Hall River. Um, it's pretty pretty crazy. Uh, so I don't know that you know our legislature just gave them more money. Uh, you don't want to get me started on solar bees, really, but I'll be happy to talk to you more about it sometime. We have some ideas of maybe ways to uh, bring some legal challenges, and if that happens, I'll, I'll keep you informed. The legislature gave the bees more money? <laughs> or Medora Corporation, mm -hmm. yes, um, and are looking at putting them in Falls Lake as well, so it's really, it's, yeah, it's pretty outrageous. So that just extends the time of the delays for the, for the Jordan-like rules, which is very, very sad after all the effort that went into creating rules with a huge stakeholder group of all the governments and the Hall River watershed. Um, just wanted to invite you back on the sledge report. Um, I'll be doing a presentation, um, a PowerPoint, and showing the map at the next Chatham Conservation Partnership meeting, which is on January 21st. It's from um, 9 to 12 at the Agricultural Building um, here in Pittsburgh. So you are very welcome to, to come. And uh, Dr. Detlef Knopf will be speaking again about um, the one for doxing as well, if you'd like to catch that. And if you, after reading this, if you decide you'd like me to come and do the presentation here, because you can't make it you know, on the 21st, I'd be happy to come back and, and do that. So again, um, at the Ag Building, yeah. Nine o'clock on the twenty-first. Yes. Uh, a few questions. Uh, will that have any uh, information about the dioxin investigation? All right, I don't know. He might. That's a good question. You know. Um, second question about the. So maybe it's a little bit too complicated for this forum, but um, a does this body have any direct authority or power to influence? Our water quality in this regard, and B, the county. So, county health departments could at least there's there's some when you get to the recommendations at the end. You know, there's certainly some things about at least uh, some notification. In this in this particular case, um, we know that the industrial chemicals coming into both the Hall River and the Cane Creek Reservoir through through various creeks where the sludge applications are um, on the land nearby. It's coming from Burlington. That's been proved that it's coming from Burlington. And um, it would be good to put some pressure probably on Burlington to find out more. But, you know, they're interested in finding out more. But it's going to take some studies of their, you know, their sewer lines to go back and see where the sources are. It's probably not one place. There's probably a lot of small... Um, industries that are contributing to this, but they shouldn't be. And um, unfortunately, you know, it's kind of a tip of the iceberg that there's probably other industrial chemicals. Um, so anyway, I'll be happy to come back and talk more about this, and you can come on the 21st. Thank you. Thank you. Second person signed up for public input session is Randy Roller. Randy. Thank you, uh, Mayor Perry and board. Um, just would like to direct the board to a handout I brought that uh, was produced by Lundy Rigsby, who uh, is over at the county. She's a register of deeds. Um, there's not a, it's a lot of numbers to digest, but basically what this tells you is what the county has been collecting in excise taxes back to 2006, and it's two dollars per thousand of recorded value. 
So if you sell a $100,000 house, you're paying $200 to the county. So it's a pretty simple and elegant way to figure out whether, where the market's been, where it's going, what's been happening. So as you can see, um, when we went through the recession created by problems on Wall Street, et cetera, you can see a huge dive from 2009 to 2010 to 2011, but you can see an uptick in 2014 and 2015, and in fact, on the last page, uh, December of 2015 is the biggest single month since August of 2007. So the same information is going to be given to the county commissioners. I just thought since a, a component of this uh, is business is happening in Pittsburgh, you should kind of have an idea. Uh, this encompasses all transactions recorded in the county, not just what would be in the multiple listing service, but in fact anything that was recorded there for sale by owner, et cetera, et cetera, and it gives you a good idea of what the market looks like. So for instance, $626 million approximately was recorded in 2015. And you know how you want to cut that or slice it or how you want to get further into the numbers, but it kind of tells you which months tend to attract people and you can, you can look over the last 10 years. I gave a copy to uh, Mr. Grusbeck and I'll email a copy uh, for your record for uh, town clerk Alice Lloyd. Um, just a couple other quick items um, that I heard uh, from Elaine. Number one, um, Elaine and Breedle worked with the town and we did a presentation years ago that involved sludge. Uh, Cinegro is the company that we sell to. Uh, the same issues that Elaine brought up have been the problems including endocrine disruptors and the town did look at possibly uh, exploring uh, things that Hal House does, essentially polishing water, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bonnets. Um, nothing ever happened, but it has come up before. And it is an issue. It's been brought before the town. Uh, it's, it's a vexing problem for all municipalities, and she's right to bring it up. Uh, it's a problem here. It's a problem in Pennsylvania. It's a problem everywhere with what's coming into the waste stream because we're not set up to handle things that are endocrine disruptors and the things that Elaine is referencing. The question that Bet you asked, um, I think if you have to look at it's House Bill 769 or 759, but that's the bill that basically eliminated all the regulations, and that's really the issue I think that's going to face the town and the county. Um, a lot of municipalities are facing that around the state. So uh, the last item is I don't know if I'll uh, tomorrow morning uh, I perhaps we'll see you, Mayor Perry, at the EDC meeting, uh, but. I brought some ideas to the town uh, last month, and uh, it's not the first time they've come up, but if the town is interested in encouraging the EDC on infrastructure to invest with Sour City, Golston, and Pittsburgh, perhaps they might want to authorize the mayor to say it's a good idea. We brought it up to the county six or seven months ago. Um, as you know, it takes a long time for these things to get into policy, but if it were to happen, uh, Mayor... Uh, Terry mentioned to the EDC that in fact it would have been a good fund to use for uh, the project you had on Salisbury Street when you had the water line break or I think on, on West Street and I looked at the updated list that uh, Mr. Grusbeck gave you. There's a number of items on there that if you had such a fund to draw it from probably could help handle those things. This isn't going to be a, a fix-all but if you had three or four hundred thousand dollars coming to Pittsburgh every year that you need you could draw on it would help with these little things uh, that end up cropping up because we have an old water and sewer system um, so I'm going to go back there and follow up on my presentation to them in November but it would be nice if uh, the board would have talked to the mayor and say that she could come and say hey we like the idea um, the other thing to know is from what I understand the county is in the black uh, you know, they do their budgets like you do your budgets, and then you see where you're going. And I think that they're finding that uh, they're probably four or five million dollars in the black at mid year. So, asking these questions might not be a bad time to start the discussion. I appreciate your opportunity to let me speak. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we have a very short agenda tonight, and so as a result, um, 
I was hoping that we could move the um, <coughs> manager's update, mayor update, and the sort of the listing of the, me of the meetings that the board has been to since our last meeting, December 14th. And um, would someone like to make a motion to move that agenda item up so that we could address it next? So moved. Do you have a second? Second. Those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Um, Mr. Greenspeck, would you like to start? You had given the members of the board in our agenda packages a listing of the number of things. Um, but I see this as a period of time in which um, the public can um, be caught up as well. So. Okay, uh, whatever your pleasure is, you think if you'd like to start talking, I'll keep yes. talking. And Please. Interrupt me as, uh, or, or jump in as you see, uh, see appropriate. Um, the um, first thing that I would that I would direct your attention to would be the. Just hold me here for a second. Uh, in, um, I guess back last fall, the uh, Chatham County Board. Uh, embarked on uh, exploring affordable housing issues uh, over a couple of days. Uh, some of those issues were discussed with, uh, with us and with uh, Siler City's board um, at the joint elected officials meeting back in November, um, which seems like it was just last week for some reason. Uh, at that meeting, I believe the consensus of the group was to allow the county manager and the town managers to kind of figure out how to uh, coalesce the process moving forward and uh, we've had a couple of meetings and conversations since then and um, we're uh, looking forward to meeting with Triangle J on the 27th, excuse me, the 22nd of January. Uh, Triangle J has some staff that's experienced with, um, uh, with, the, with affordable housing plans. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't want to put words into the county manager's I believe they're embarking on, uh, on, on a plan, um, a third party plan as well. And um, I asked her to um, consider um, uh, including the town um, and some analysis of the town as an option in that, in that plan. But uh, I think we're going to have more information as far as what, what moves and what steps that we're going to take uh, after we receive some, some pretty good input from Triangle J Council of Governments uh, staff. Um, with regard to Chatham Park, uh, of course Chatham Park has uh, one has one of the additional elements, uh, the affordable, an affordable housing piece um, that will be required for you to review and approve. Um, as a whole, we're expecting to receive those additional elements uh, sometime here in the near future. Um, we had originally, uh, on this agenda, I think, planned to go through and outline a process for that. Um, we don't have anything in hand yet, uh, as far as as far as uh, the complete submittal. Of, we don't have any submittal of additional elements, as a matter of fact, uh, at the moment. And so we will be receiving those, uh, analyzing the process. We have some ideas, but uh, until we actually have the full submittal in hand, um, it's it's kind of difficult for us to outline the process. So I think within the next couple of weeks we should expect that, and that at that point in time, Mr. Jones and probably be giving um, a, a pretty critical outline of how we're going to approach those. Um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a very important um, uh, important piece of the process because then that will help us um, really define on how uh, how some things like facilities, uh, infrastructure, and items like that are going to be addressed overall in the plan before we get to the actual analysis, uh, the submittal and analysis of the small area plan. So um, we are definitely looking forward to that. Unified Mr. Development or Ordinance, um, another... Mr. Mr. I believe that John Bonnet has a question, Mr. Grisbeck. Yes, sir. If I may ask a question on the additional elements. Um, uh, I'm understanding that Chatham Park is intending to present that to the town the end of this month. So I took that to mean um, to staff, uh, or is that to this board? We'll be staff will be receiving it first. Sure. Um, obviously, it's a public document when we receive it. Um, but at the time that um, 
of course, receiving it and actually reviewing it and approving it are um, you know, just parts of you know, you know, points, milestones in the process. Mm -hmm. So once we receive it, uh, again, we'll, we'll, um, we'll go over with you our recommendations for how to review it. Are you anticipating just one small area plan or multiple plans? Uh, the, the, these are the additional elements. Oh, the uh, additional are, elements. Yeah, no, the small area plans, uh, it's a good question. Two different pieces, uh, because at different points in time, we, we've talked about reviewing small area plans before reviewing and approving additional elements. Uh, the additional elements are the 12 or 13 items mm -hmm that uh, have to be reviewed and approved by you uh, before uh, before other elements and other processes within the development can take place. Um, so if you want to think of the additional elements are almost are almost more of a you know almost more of a, a global or umbrella view of a lot of the issues that are going to impact our community as a result of Chatham Park. Small area plans will be the actual geographic um, areas um, that will have you know, uses defined and, and you know, infrastructure defined. And you start filling in more information, more, specific, more very specific geographical information in the small area plan process. So I, I think rightly so, we're going to be able to take a look at those additional elements first before we get to any review of the small area plans. But um, we'll have some more, more ideas when, when that comes. And just given the uh, the magnitude of the number of, of items that are additional. Um, uh, do you have any experience or any estimation about how long of a period you and your staff might need to review it? To review all the um, additional items. Yeah, um, I think some are some are going to, to move a little bit quicker than others. I only use the affordable housing piece. I mean that you know the the, the, the two issues are kind of you know, coinciding uh, in a way. I mean, the county will be picking up uh, their their review of a, an affordable housing plan about the same time, maybe the same time that we'll be looking at the affordable housing um, additional element. But um, but I mean, that's that's really going to be have to, something that we're going to have to follow follow back on. I would suspect that some issues are going to take longer than others to review, and uh, I think the most important thing to keep in mind is that, that we don't want to put the town uh, at risk um, in terms of uh, how we process this information. It's something that we've been very upfront with the public all along the conditional elements. Um, you know, it's, it's, been a, it's been an integral part of, of the plan development district that the additional elements be a public process. It was baked into the PDD as a, you know, for that very purpose that the community have an opportunity to review some of the issues that affect uh, they're affected by Chatham Park. So um, we will we will do our best to come up with uh, uh, an appropriate timeline for, for each one of those elements. Uh, Mr. Jones, if you have anything to add on that. Uh, I would, it's going to be many months that we will be reviewing these additional elements. And, um, the timeline you know, will be uh, sort of outlined for the town board and the citizens, hopefully at our 25th And, I, and, and Town Park folks, the folks who are writing the additional elements in the small area, thing, they they understand and recognize that it's just, this process will take many months to get through. Um, it is not something that uh, staff is going to be able to uh, get through within a month or two month period. It's going to be many months that uh, help, help me remember um, after staff review, is there is this the one that goes to the technical review committee, or is that the small area plan, or is that the UDF? That's the UDF. Okay. So after staff, then does it go to the planning board? Does it, it go to public it hearing? It will go to the yeah. planning board. It will go to public hearing. Okay. Thank you. That's that's uh, reassuring and uh, informative. Um, the there certainly are some very important items in those additional elements. And how streets are to be built, how landscaping is to proceed, uh, schools, affordable yeah. housing, um, fire. Uh, it's, 
it's uh, police protection. It's, it's those are really big things, and it's been weighing on my mind and um, the uncertainties there. Um, I, I look forward to that process and learning more what their plans are and how we might respond. And I, and I think, you know, I think it's it's uh, you know a process and journey is a great way to describe it because I think what we're looking at doing is filling in, you know, the filling in more detail as we as we kind of pro as we kind of process along in this journey. The, the, the PED provided a broad outline at a higher altitude. The additional elements start filling in some of those, uh, filling in some of those blanks, and it, allow, it allows the community, it allows the board to help fill in those blanks. The small area plan then is where you start seeing um, some of those things in action. But even then, the small area plan contained numerous site plans. So a small area plan in and of itself is not a site plan. It could it can be more than one site plan that will eventually be part of a small area plan. So it, it kind of starts general and gets more specific as, as we move along with the process. This is, it's, it's very tricky. I mean, don't, you know, this is, this has been, uh, you know, it's, it's 7,000 acres and it's, you know, by design, I think, um, it's, unless we were to allow it to develop, to develop piecemeal, like I, like I think you see in 95, to, uh, 100% of the other uh, developments in the country, um, this provided uh, the best, maybe not perfect, but the best opportunity for us to help control how these uses were applied over 7,000 acres and how we were, how we would be able to grow uh, along with it. So, yeah, it's painful, but it's it's necessary. And I think, uh, as I've told people all along, just approving the master plan was in a way you guys are going to throw something at me but in a way it was the easiest part of the process the fun really starts now so um this is where you guys get to really roll up your sleeves <laughs> <laughs> you can't no i not i mean it, you know, I, I don't mean fun i guess it all depends yeah, on how you look at it yeah. anyway thank you great question and I didn't mean to skip forward into the, into the UDL or the Unified Development Ordinance uh, discussion, but that's that's something else that folks have been keeping their eye on. Uh, module one was re was uh, presented to the planning board, I believe it was last week, and it's online. Um, we're expecting a meeting with the technical advisory committee, I believe, next week. Uh, from four to six, uh, and we'll be advertising that. Um, the um, module one, I think it's important to, to, to keep in mind, is not a finished product. Um, these are these are new regulations, uh, but they're regulations that will have uh, a review of at least in, in at least one meeting, probably more of the technical advisory committee. Um, it, we would also anticipate. Uh, no, I think we are going to demand actually of you guys. To meet with the planning board and uh, you guys meeting the town board of commissioners to meet with the planning board and joint meeting, um, either following or shortly before. I don't think Jeff and I figured out exactly when that was going to take place yet, but we would anticipate at least one public meeting um, involving UDO uh, Module One, and that if everyone felt comfortable with that, then you guys could formally uh, take a a review and if necessary approve it at that point. So it's going to take that's going to take a little bit of time to, time to do. But I think that any notion that module one and the things that you see out there in module one are, represent the finished product of the EDO, that's not it's not accurate. There's more work to do on that. Uh, I think there was a there was a, uh, a lot of work I think from the on the part of the consultant that went into that. I think there were a couple of meetings of the technical advisory. Uh, board, uh, planning board had a little bit of discussion on it this past week, but I think obviously there's more work to do uh, from that end as well. So, and Jeff, if I'm not mistaken, I think our next step is to try to nail down. I know you guys are liking these meetings, and I'm, I apologize because I'm trying to press you guys to get the retreat meeting nailed down, but uh, I think we're going to be looking to you guys to help nail down uh, a meeting with, uh, as I said before, with the planning board. Um, and so uh, yeah. I'm going to leave that up to Jeff to decide when he's comfortable in doing that. But that's going to be very soon. Yeah, it could happen hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, <coughs> Brian stated we will be having the advisory committee meeting next uh, Tuesday. Um, and we'll have hopefully full participation from all the other advisory committee members. Um, there are nine? I think 
there's 10, uh, one member is no, no longer a member. He decides that his time is just going to be devoted to it. Uh, but all the other members can be at this meeting. Um, and we'll uh, hopefully kick that off next Tuesday. Uh, I anticipate a couple of meetings. Uh, this, this module one is over 300 pages long, and um, I don't anticipate us all meeting through the entire document in one sitting. Um, so we'll probably meet next Tuesday. And then again, probably the following week, if everybody's schedule is, is, is available for that. Uh, and then hopefully with the panel board and the planning board um, sometime after that. Um, and I, I, I want to say that I think um, what we're doing right now is comment period time. This is during the month of January and February. A little bit in February. It's all this comment period to the consultants. And we will not be asking the town board or the planning board to make a recommendation and or any type of decision on module one until we get to June or July. Um, so this is all this comment period. They're going to go back, write, um, redraft module one to our comments, to things that they heard, bring it back to us, let us review again. All the while that they are writing module two, which is the standards that will be applied here in Pittsburgh, and that module two will come sometime in March. We'll have a review period for that. Um, comments will be sent back, and then, it'll, then we'll go through a, a, a complete document review. Hopefully, they've just addressed everything that we want to address. We'll have public forums for, for the complete document, and then we'll go on to um, planning board and town board for uh, formal recommendations and adoption. Jeff, I have one. Do you have a uh, update on the technical committee members? I have to say, I uh, yeah, I don't have an idea who, 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 who that who that yeah. membership is. We have um, Patrick Bradshaw, which is a yeah. local attorney. Um, Taylor Hobbs, which is an architect. Um, we have Robbie Oldham, who is uh, with us right mm -hmm. now at the John Park as well. Um, we have uh, Kitty Mitchum, which is a downtown business uh, person. Uh, we have uh, a school system representative on there. Um, the person that dropped out who uh, wasn't able to commit time is uh, our chief, uh, Darrell. Uh, he, he stated that his time, that he just wasn't able to devote the time to it. Um, and if, you know, uh, who else do we have? Um, uh, planning board member Brian Taylor is on there. We have another local resident, Barry Ross, is on there. Um, I may be missing another two. Uh, What's Mr. One. Ross's background? Um, this is Mr. Ross's background. I'm not quite sure. Um, I don't know. Mr. Ross. Larry, Larry Ross. Oh, uh, yeah, he actually, uh, he's. I think he lives across the street from you, actually. Yeah, uh, he moved here about two years ago from St. Louis. He has he was uh, his background was in automotive engineering, I believe, but he he served on the planning on a planning commission in St. Louis for a few years uh, as well. So he's been looking to get involved for since he moved here. Um, and all those members will be receiving their packet, just much like what you received in December. Um, which will include the hard copy of the module one and then the outline that Roger uh, gave to you all. Um, and then Roger and myself and other staff members will be sitting down with the committee next Tuesday. Thank you. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, you know, as we said going into it, the UDO was something that was going to take a little while to do. and. Uh, it's, it's nothing that, uh, that we're going to be able to hurry through, um, obviously, uh, but we will, uh, we will keep, keep working on it and uh, I think have something that uh, is very modern and appropriate uh, for Pittsburgh. We will have ordinances that properly reflect Pittsburgh and I think that's everybody's goal uh, as we get to the end of that. 
Uh, north side water system improvements, the elevated storage tank. Uh, as some of you are aware, uh, staff, uh, McKinnon Creed and uh, Hydrostructures have been working on some plans for a, um, an elevated water tank on the north side um, of our water system uh, near the new development. Um, we are um, continuing to go back and forth with plans on that, and I believe we'll have uh, we'll, be have, we'll have the final uh, plans and the hydrological model, which will help to evaluate the, um, how, in a, in a nutshell, I've done this down, um, hopefully not too far beyond what it really is, but with, with, with the inclusion of a new elevated tank, we want to make sure that the pressure um, on our existing system uh, remains consistent and the structures will be uh, completing that review over the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, we've got a number of stakeholders, all the all the usual suspects reviewing this, and, uh, and again within within the month we can have what should be some some, uh, some final plans. Uh, the town attorney and I are, are developing uh, in a utilities agreement uh, for that. Um, the intention being that the developer will be paying for the costs, and then we'll be sorting out within that agreement how those. Uh, how those costs will be handled uh, moving forward. So uh, we'll expect more to present more information on that to you uh, here in the near future. Uh, wastewater uh, inflow and infiltration. Um, we've, we've provided some updates on that over the past few meetings. Uh, you'll, you'll recall that uh, I and I, for short, um, is looking at the flow of storm water in, into our sanitary sewer um, distribution system not at the plant, mind you, but it's, the, it's how, in a nutshell, how water infiltrates uh, our manhole and our pipes and then ends up at the sanitary, or at the wastewater treatment plant and becomes, in effect, we, 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 we become the treater of storm water rather than the treater of actual um, sanitary water coming from homes. And uh, that's, that's just not a good way to do business. And so, um, we, we did we did mention I think the previous meeting that hydrostructures would be installing 10 meters in various spots to look at uh, um, the extent and measure the extent of flow. Um, I say fortunately, um, it may not have seemed like it at the time, but fortunately we did receive a significant amount of rainfall over the holidays, and uh, I think we got some good data. Uh, we're breaking that down. Uh, once we've broken that down, we're going to look at. Um, we're going to look at smoke testing or running smoke through the system to try to see if uh, the data matches up with the actual physical observed evidence of smoke coming through. And I think in the past we've shown pictures of smoke coming up through uh, you know, various poles in the system. Um, that will give us an idea of the fix. And this all along has been sort of a find and fix process. Uh, we'll have the uh, We'll have those plans uh, submitted to Deaner by, it's going to be in a hurry, by February 1. And then, um, long story short, looking at construction by May of 2016. And um, construction doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be digging up every uh, sanitary sewer line in town. Um, so uh, we can get into construction methods on this, but in some cases I think we're going to be able to um, use a, a lot more passive fixes on these to, to sort of plug the holes and plug leaks. And uh, we'll be getting into that out for presenting a little bit more information on the actual technical details of the fixes here in the near future. But that's, that's the update on our, our process uh, with that right now. I want to just interrupt us uh, now and sh and as we move toward an, an issue that has been um, uh, that kind of came to um, a couple, couple of these out for you. Actually, Mayor Perry, um, Mayor Perry actually started bringing this to my attention um, pretty early uh, in her tenure, and it's a it's a problem that you know it's funny too because as we as we're understanding you know the, the old uh, cliche of you know city workers standing over the hall. As we were out there actually looking at it, uh, a number of times someone would remark, "Well, it's always been like that." I mean, what's the you know what's what's the problem? Well, yeah, uh, I guess. But the the, um, the issue is this. Get this picture here. If you follow where my if you follow where my uh, 
Church is, is over just over this way on the other side of the cemetery. There is a there's a, a drain uh, that's that's actually right here, and this represents the the, the dug location of the drain. Um, this was before we started digging. Uh, the problem that we've had with this location is that the drain box, the drain structure itself, you can see the pipe that comes through here. The drain structure itself is very old. And um, I don't know if you can see some of this. Uh, it, I, I've never seen a drain box itself that, that is quite this old. These are, the, the box itself was actually constructed of bricks, and I, I couldn't even hazard a guess. If, uh, if Mr. Poteet or Mr. Royal was here, he'd give you an idea. Mr. Royal has come in. Hey there. Have you ever seen anything like that, Mr. Royal? Yes, I have. In I Chicago. And how old do you think that was? And 100 years old. So structures, structures made out of brick that are 100 years old that have water coursing through them multiple times over the years are, are bound to fail. And the failure in this case can be seen in the collapsing. And so um, this, this kind of is another classic, you know, for Pittsburgh find and fix project in that we needed to figure out what exactly this was right here because, because it was so old that even Junior Goldson uh, didn't, know, uh, didn't know what was down there underneath the pavement. So we dug around, we found it, we're getting an idea for what's, what's at stake. Uh, the next step will be to get these materials out and then to form a new concrete structure, drop that in place. Uh, at the same time, I believe we're going to be sending through uh, hydrostructures again. We'll be sending through another one of those fancy robot cameras to kind of come through underneath, uh, underneath, the, um, uh, underneath the road surface and through the, the tunnel. Um, and this, would be what it, this would be essentially what it looks like on the other side. Uh, it comes through, the water comes through here. We're going to get an idea for what is what is actually, what kind of condition the pipe is actually in. Um, it's our fondest hope that the, uh, that the, uh, that the box, the actual culvert box, the, the new concrete formed culvert box that will be dropping in over on that other side is, is all that over here is all that we'll actually need to replace. We're factoring in my luck, so it wouldn't surprise me as if, if we're we're looking at, I mean, the worst case scenario is we're looking at a pipe that crosses the entire length of the road. I don't know, Mr. Royal, if you have anything to add on that. That's correct. The pipe's in good shape. That's the the pipe is in good shape? Yes. Okay. So we've overcome my luck. Uh, I said yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, if the pipe's in good shape. We have to video the tape. Okay. Yeah. So, um, hopefully we can get this we can get this project uh, done very soon. I think I, I was I was driving out uh, during the heavy rain around the holidays, and um, the area and, and you guys have more history with this area, this particular area of town than I do. The area, the, the problem here, isn't so much a, a situation of flooding uh, or this this not being able to handle the water so much as it is a hole that's in the ground that kind of is an attractive nuisance and. Um, trip hazard and safety hazard for drivers, pedestrians, um, anyone else. And so I think that's, if, if I'm not mistaken, Mary, Mary Perry, that's kind of where the initial concerns kind of came from. Why hasn't the town done something about this beforehand? And, well, again, it was always that way, so. Uh, <coughs> well, I do appreciate the, the, uh, the work towards uh, solution here. Uh, the, the neighbor across the street called it to my attention because she said there was a blind man in the community up the hill uh, who was negotiating nearby that one day and she was she ran out of her house and, and tried to keep him from falling in and that was before the cones and the, and the uh, yellow tape were put up. So um, so she was particularly concerned about it. But, um, but I do understand that, that it has a history and, and uh, look forward to the solution of it. Thank you. Did, did we do that with our new buck, our new loader, our new uh, 
Unfortunately, no. Okay. That that came in. You know, it's funny because that uh, our new our new backhoe back came in uh, about the time uh, we had a, actually a, a consultant uh, consultant a contractor um, begin the digging. But that this is the sort of project that that we'll be able to do effectively in house with this new backhoe. And I, uh, we're going to keep you know the old backhoe, so to speak, because it's just. You know, we have we have old infrastructure that, that, that still needs to be maintained, and if you don't have a backhoe, you're you're at the mercy of these of these contractors. And we were this time, fortunately, we just happened to be standing right there when um, and caught uh, a contractor who was local, knew of the situation, you know, had a little bit of an idea what was going on, and and, and we got him in there uh, and busy. Uh, and sometimes you get lucky in that way, um, but uh, in order to minimize that luck, yeah, we need. Things like uh, you know, our own backhoes and how uh, to handle emergencies. And, uh, yeah, they were really excited. There's nothing that excites these guys more than get a new piece of equipment. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to. I mean, it's one of those weird things where you don't want to hope for projects like this to work out all the time, but if, if you do, you're, you're glad that you have the new equipment. Well, if, if I may uh, just comment a moment that uh, our town. Uh, fathers a hundred years ago probably hadn't anticipated that they would need to stash away money for replacement of this brick box. Um, but uh, if I may circle back, uh, the north side water uh, system and the elevated storage tank, uh, uh, I understand that, that well, I, I'm, I'm sure that you're um, anticipating what kinds of costs that will be uh, to the town in the far future, but um, specifically, I, I, I hope that we're looking into um, maybe that analysis by hydrostructures feeding into uh, some understanding of how our costs might increase. I remember discussion of the PRD valves, and the uh, what I didn't hear was discussion possibility of increased maintenance costs or repairs from that increased pressure on our entire system. And again, I, I apologize. I'm, I'm probably treading into your your knitting, um, but uh, I'd like us to, to be very mindful, eyes wide open about those kinds of costs, because I, what little I've understood about municipal governance, just trying to bone up. Um, this is kind of where towns have small towns have gotten into trouble when they start to grow rapidly because they don't anticipate the replacement costs mm -hmm. and the maintenance costs of the infrastructure that's being built. So Yeah, those are those are those are uh, those are great thoughts and, and definitely concerns that we need to be uh, continually aware of. We have uh, Fred, um, sorry, Mr. Royal, uh, Mr. Poteet and I have been uh, talking separate conversations about establishing what's called an asset management plan, which was something that Mr. Terry tried off and on to do over the years, and, and uh, uh, in this case, it's something that, that it's, it's one of those things where it's it's not one of those things that's going to be nice to have, it's one of those things we will need to have. Um, so, um, so we're actually starting those conversations here. Uh, and looking at looking at that in in addition to a capital uh, a more robust capital improvement program, uh, but the the um, the asset management plan is something that uh, in some cases for for funding that the state requires that you actually have in order to receive sufficient point um, totals uh, on on things like forgivable loans and grants and things like that. So that's another reason why. I will need to have it. But it does take those operation and maintenance costs in, into effect with not only our existing infrastructure, but infrastructure that we anticipate to have. And so that that type of study then would, would feed um, how you go about setting uh, how, how you go about setting rates in order to make sure that that, that what you're charging um, new and existing customers uh, will help pay for those OM costs. So lots of work. Lots of work, lots of fun. You're coming out on a good team. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, Salisbury Street, um, the, other, the other piece uh, that, we, that we've been busy with uh, would be the engineering, planning, parks, facilities, office spaces. Um, you recall at the last meeting, uh, the board authorized me to, to 
work with the owner of the building uh, to uh, begin executing an agreement. Uh, some of the input that I received from the board uh, in order to execute that agreement would be to remove the town from um, responsibility uh, for things like uh, the HVAC and the, uh, uh, the roof. Uh, the owner has agreed to take those out of the lease agreement um, and also to look at um, reducing the term of the lease down to two years. The owner is agreeable to that as well. Um, some of our discussions in the last day or so have revolved around uh, making sure that um, minor repairs to the parking lot um, are covered. And um, I think uh, in, in terms of timing, what we're looking to do on that um, would be to um, begin uh, arranging for those repairs, things like the striping, at least on our side of the building, uh, filling some potholes, taking care of the accessibility issues um, with regard to where the pavement meets the uh, meets the, the uh, handicap accessible entrances, getting those taken care of, and then backing those amounts out of uh, the town's lease responsibilities. And so, um, so I will be looking at language uh, on that uh, this week uh, as well. Uh, idea being to get. Uh, over there, uh, as soon as we can, I believe Hobbs Upchurch, who currently occupies the space, uh, is in the process of moving over to their facility near, actually, strangely enough, coincidentally, where the Salisbury Street uh, fix is occurring right now. Uh, they're in the process of finishing that space and uh, trying to move uh, because they want to get on with their lives as well. So, um, uh, timing, timing, timing. Uh, we'll keep working on it. Staff reviews. Uh, it's that time of year. I've uh, been conducting performance evaluations that cover, uh, I, I really go over the, the calendar year of 2015, um, uh, more along the lines of trying to plan for what, what it is that each department had on a, on a professional, um, in terms of their professional um, needs uh, are concerned, but also their departmental needs. And, and I kind of use those as, as individual retreats uh, for both themselves and their departments as we get our budget work. Um, I, think I have all but, all but one done, and I think the assembly has turned into an actual exit interview rather than a staff review. Um, but still, I think that sort of conversation will be valuable as well. Um, the, um, uh, the, I don't know if I can segue over now into the board retreat day. Um, which I received a few responses on the doodle poll on that, and I think the three responses that I got were favorable to February 3rd, which is a Wednesday from 4 to 8. I know Commissioner Foley has been Saturday, um, has a little, um, has kind of a tricky issue with Saturdays typically, so uh, that's why through Wednesday out there, um, we don't really, it's not a, not a meeting week otherwise for us. Um, and then I would, I would propose from 4 to 8, I know Mr. Uh, Commissioner Fiocco had indicated that, that uh, if, if the folks want to go longer than four to eight, I assume by longer, if he said longer, that he worded it as longer in his email, I, I think he meant maybe on you know, a second date or an additional date, that's something we might be able to consider as well. Uh, four to eight is enough, probably enough time uh, to get us started on it. Um, if we can, we, we would, in this case, we would probably skinny up the, the staff presentations and then, um, and then spend a couple hours, you know, break for dinner and then spend a couple hours or work through dinner. Either way, I want to feed you guys because that's just a bad hour of the time of the day to not be eating. Um, but, but then continue through with, um, you know, with the strategic planning later in the evening. And then, as Commissioner Fioco said in the email, if you wanted to stretch that out to another day, um, we can certainly do that now. Uh, this is, you know, I can't stress this enough. But this is very critical from a staff perspective as we start this as we start this calendar year and this fiscal year. Uh, so if we could come up with dates, we could, from a staff perspective, we could start planning for it. That would be great. And recognizing that some of us answered your poll, your survey before the announcement was made that Wednesday, February the third, would be a reception for 
the incoming president of the Economic Development Corporation, and that's from 4-6. Um, if we could, uh, I know Mr. Fiocco um, may feel strongly about going, and, and I do too. Maybe if we could just do 4-30 to 8-30, that might. Sandra, uh, I work until about 6 or 6.30 on Wednesday. Well, you do. I, I'm sorry, I missed that due call. I don't recall seeing it, so um, I, I, I'm, I'm off on Monday to Thursday. But uh, Wednesday, I can't remember early. I can go into details why I can't, but it's not a day that I can leave early. Let's, uh, let's fill with that just a little bit and leave the manager's report at this time. I'd like to recognize the young man from Troop 93 who is here getting his citizenship in the community badge. Um, and, um, and, and so, young man, if you'd like to stand up and introduce yourself, we'd love to know who you are. Yeah. Hello, I'm Joshua Honeycutt from Troop 93, and I came to this meeting to kind of see what goes on in town commissioner meetings. Um, we're Troop 93, I'm Star, and I'm working on citizenship of the community merit badge. Yes. Thank you very much. Right Absolutely. It's an important badge to, to get uh, as you head towards Eagle, and I remember I remember about 30 some odd years ago, my son doing the same thing. So, um, Moving to... Um, uh, to, to my update, um, there have not been that many meetings because of the fact that the holiday season has uh, somewhat interrupted things, but I have been amazed at the number of meetings that one could go to if one were inclined to do so. Um, even before I was sworn in, of course, I had met with various people. Mr. Grusbeck gave me a, uh, a good overall view of things. I met with folks at Chatham Park to find out what the update was regarding the uh, movement of the, of the development. I had been to several economic development corporation meetings and um, I have been to New Mayor School and I have been to um, uh, Triangle J Council of Governments, Mayors and County Chairs meeting last week. So um, there are just an amazing number of opportunities to network and um, uh, and to and to learn. So, uh, so that's basically what I've been up to. Anybody else want to report on meetings that they have attended? Or, as I said, because of the holidays, it may be a little bit uh, on the small side. But I don't have anybody. County Climate Change Committee uh, has set a meeting date. Unfortunately, due to a snafu, we um, their their first date has been set for our next meeting time. Uh, so I think we're going to get that fixed. But um, I believe that the membership of the committee has been settled. Um, so um, hopefully, we'll get that date worked out. Um, and let's see, I guess that's it for uh, reporting, but are we moving into Commissioner Concerns or is that a separate, is that now? I think we could. Mm -hmm. um, a meeting I was uh, invited to uh, with Chatham Park um, was very interesting. I learned an awful lot. Uh, I was uh, very pleased to learn uh, about their progress and some of their plans, especially reassured to hear their thinking on schools and uh, their role in helping the county with schools. Um, but it occurred to me, and I shared with them, um, that I think it'd be very beneficial for this body to receive quarterly briefings from Chatham Park investors. And I wondered if that might be something that we should discuss. Uh, inviting them to be on our calendar on a regular basis every three months. Um, I found it really helpful and I think that it would be 
even more helpful if we could have them present the same kind of information as they presented um, in their offices, but in a public forum, uh, possibly even giving opportunity for uh, questions from the public, or at least from us. I think that we're invariably going to be hearing from our constituents over a three-month period each quarter. We'll, we'll come up with some questions that we could ask them. So, um, I don't know how to proceed. Do we want to have a little bit of a discussion? Or shall I make a motion? I do think that we, I don't probably agree with that they're going to do these public information meetings, and I don't know if we need to include that when we're thinking about this. I do like the idea of making everything very public. And, um, bodies, other entities that are meeting with the Chatham Park people from time to time? Yeah, I understand that the school board. The school board today. meets with them. They, um, they did today. But they do. They meet with the school board quite often and other people that have interest in Chatham Park. Mm -hmm. And reference to the quarterly meetings, I think that would be a good idea for them to present quarterly meetings. I don't know about the discussion back and forth with them that probably would be a better time for that, but the board should be able to ask them questions uh, for the meeting. I think that would be a good update. But yes, they've been, Chatham Park has been meeting with the school board for quite a while now. And they have mm -hmm. different areas and they have a map which they have assigned or rather not assigned, but focused on different areas where they have asked the school board and the uh, superintendent specifically it, are these good areas for the schools? So they have been consistently meeting with the school board, and it's not just yesterday, they've been meeting with them for months. So I think there's a, something separate going on that you're probably aware of that they are meeting, doing this presentation to county commissioners, town board members, um, school board. Yeah. It's just an update on what they're doing. I'm assuming that's what you did. I did one, yeah. maybe a month and a half ago, but that's sort of totally different from meeting continuously with the school board because it's ongoing meeting that they have with the school board, specifically the superintendent. But I agree if there's some way to make this presentation that like John Thomas and I attended this week, this past week, uh, where they presented um, just some ideas, nothing concrete, just some ideas of what they're working on. And I do think it's things that the public would be very interested in how to make that clear to them would be, that'd be a, a great deal. I like the idea of public you know, disclosure and all of that. I guess one concern I would have, <coughs> Paul Methick, it may be during the meeting that I attended, there was um, phraseology about how some of the um, some of the items that were discussed were um, uh, proprietary to the plan. And I guess one would not want to disclose anything, how, how does a public body like this deal with a proprietary um, uh, aspect of a development or a corporate situation? Well, once something is presented to you or received by you or the staff in connection with the town's business, it becomes a public record, whether it's proprietary before that or not. Okay. But I, I, there's no reason why you can't invite them to come set up a schedule. Uh, to, to come and discuss whatever their plans are. It may, it may be that they don't have any plans that particular quarter or that they're any different, but if they do, then I, I don't see why you can't ask them to come. Yeah. I don't see any, any, whether there's any harm in that. I think in some cases, maybe what you're getting at uh, is, is that in some cases from an economic development perspective, they may have certain, they may have certain clients or projects that they can't necessarily involve at that very moment in time. And that's that's where it might get tricky for those, that information to be public. 
Yeah, I'm not saying don't have the discussion. I'm just saying that when it, when it comes to, I mean, when you say proprietary, that's the first thing that pops in. I think it would be very helpful to open up the lines of dialogue and uh, doing so on a regular basis, uh, I think, would, would give. Uh, I know folks that I've spoken to would, would like to know that there is something happening on a regular basis. And, um, their plans may not be changing very much, but certainly there, there are things that happen. There's developments and, and um, progress towards their goals, and, and that would be informative. Uh, I know to myself and, and to many of the folks in the public that I've spoken to. So, um, so you need a motion? I, I move to the as manager to arrange quarterly briefings or invite quarterly briefings from Chatham Park investors to this board and the public. Second. Heard the motion and second. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Thank you. I think that's a very nice step forward. Are there any other commissioners' concerns to be addressed? We can set a retreat day. Yeah. You're off on Mondays and Thursdays, mm -hmm. is that correct? What would the, the Thursday of that, the 4th of, of February be? Is that, is that available? Uh, it's good for me. That's the only thing I have on the internal Thursday or anything will be in. I guess we have to check with Mr. Long on his schedule. Yeah, he just, uh, he's, as of now, he's good on that day. He was, at the end of the end of January, it was problematic for him. That's why I moved to me. That's pretty good. I mean, the rest of the Thursday is going to be except for that first Thursday. Could you oh, you say that for Thursday is not good. I'm sorry. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Step on this point. Could you check to, with Mr. Long to see how his Thursdays besides the first Thursday are? Yeah, so starting as early as uh, February 11th. And I'm free anytime, so whatever the earliest that works for everyone else. Yeah, that'd be fine. I, um, I have elected official school, but I'm back Thursday morning, so that would work for me. The 11th is also good for me all day. We're talking about uh, four to eight, something like in that range. Yeah, I'm <coughs> late, late afternoon, evening. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you want to. Depending on what you're both saying, I was thinking of me earlier. <coughs> That's good for Michael, according to what he put on the doodle poll. Thursday, the 11th. Okay, so are we doing four, or do you want to do four hours? I think four hours is a plenty. Yeah, four is fine. But I mean, it's a bit more earlier. It's a bit more. Okay, so I will check with Mr. Long, February 11th, 48. Is there any other business to come before the board this evening? I have just one little minor concern for Mr. Grubeck. Let me pass this on to John Poteet. Uh There is some sidewalk bricks in front of uh, Tommy Edwards' antique store that have uh, settled. They're down to about six bricks. They're down about two inches. It could be become a trip hazard for somebody. I think they just need to take them out and pack some sand or hydraulic cement, and that should take care of them. I don't know if it came from this rain. It's right there in front of uh, at the stoplight. Okay. Right at the crosswalk pole. Oh. All right, we'll take a look. Any other concerns or matters to bring before the board? Entertain a motion? I have one thing. The Mount Sinai Church 
the street in front of Mount Tantanian Church, they have complained to me about the flooding there. They had a trip, when we had all that rain, it was a very flooding event. So I was wondering if someone had checked check into that. Probably. And among other flooding events, I know there were a lot of events. Where, where exactly? I'm sorry. Uh, you know, the Mount, well, behind Hardy. Park behind Hardy. Oh, okay. That street I got you. that goes yeah. down. You mean the bottom between the church and the concrete yes. plant? Uh -huh. Yeah. That flooded over the Christmas holidays? Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. Thank you. A motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. <laughs> Game starts in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs>